boom what's up everybody who's watching out there in the world of boxing and those who are abroad as you see today we've dedicated and celebrate the great fighter in the current day canelo alvarez and his mexican heritage as you see we have the platform all set up we got to pay homage and we got to show respect the guys went out there and they performed last night but before we get going in this thing we're going to break down several things and i think you as boxing fans are very appreciative of in-depth breakdown and when it comes down to it you like to know instead what we're going to do is give you more of a bird's eye view of what truly happened and why is it that Canelo has these components as it's running across the bottom of the screen? We make sure in our production that you have something to follow as we go. So on the screen will be some constant uh, verbiage to keep you up the flow. And you can take notes, mental notes, or you can write stuff down. But it's going to be all good. We're going to really give you from a boxing, inside of the boxing gym perspective of what you were looking at last night for those of you who had the opportunity to watch in Canelo Alvarez and that unique set of skills that he possesses and how did it get to that point and how is he one of the guys that continues to improve so hopefully once you get done with this you'll be 10 IQ points higher than you were when you started and that's our narrative but before we get started I'd like to introduce myself for those of you who have never been on this channel yet shame on you and boy you are late to the dance my name is eric a bradley coach that is and it's time to box we're gonna get it going on five components that make up the canelo alvarez vegetable soup that's what analogy we will tie to this today you see canelo as a bowl of hearty vegetable soup and the components that make up that vegetable soup to make it really fruitful is first component is offense as you see right here he has impregnable offense and when you see him it's obvious that whenever he boxes that he gets your attention and what you're looking at here is one of the key components to his offense it's not just a variation of a jab but this a type jab that he's using right here and what we call this is the bazooka jab and what that does is it takes your power line in the world of brazilian jiu-jitsu this is a very common phrase so for those in the mixed martial arts world you'll understand this the power line is the sturdy just like if you took a pole and stuck it down from the top of your skull through down to your tailbone what you'd find is if your body's at a particular angle, legs bent, heel up, stable, nearly a 45 degree angle, you're at your strongest point. That's your power line. When you hit someone with, a, with that bazooka jab, what happens is it breaks down their power line. So even if you're a fighter with great balance, what you will find is there are certain type punches that bring a certain type force that will break you down physically. And a lot of times you're watching matches, you're not truly understanding that different type jabs are used for different type things. Some are able to bust your nose, creating what we call the blue flash. Others are just to blind you to set up right hand and counters. So understand that Canelo's become a master at throwing thudding force type jab not power jab that's quick twitch turned over into a punch Wow, that's power so the variation of his offense is what we would call for Canelo that would be considered his carrots inside of his vegetable soup he has carrots and that kind of sets you up and gives you clarity as to what type offense he has there's hook off ofs which is being able to throw hooks off of his jab and uppercuts off of his jab and he understands how to throw combinations 
off of no matter what punches lead he can faint the right hand come up under and come back over and then he's wiping your nose with the left hook that's a serious variation of punches so his offense is his carrots so i hope you guys are staying with me and for those of you who are new you really like to get clarity on things like this and this is kind of what we do you know not only teach it but we share and show and bridge the gap so you're not just watching a fight so every time you watch a show no matter how many you watch your iq's up 10 points let's do it next one what else is in his suit the next thing that's in his suit is his defense on down to his defensive moves as we take it back to the fight that he had with daniel jacobs danny he showed you an immense formula of defense and how did he develop the defensive prowess this defense comes from being in the ring and having experience and realizing that offense and offense is not enough i constantly rendered this to the guys and the teachers and the trainers and the coaches in which i am over and guiding so that they understand that three generations of boxing okay so with that foundation you learn through experience and you continue to pass the buck our job here is to pass the buck to you so you you're not watching the fight the same you used to watch the fight and when you're doing that you're able to really hone in on what you see you'll start to really it'll start to become clear like water so when you see his defense he's able to pick shots now and pop pop and he's catching joints and catching from here and blocking with elbows catching with forearms here here and his defense and the elusiveness in which he's offering his opponent is second to none and where do you think he got that when he realized when watching the other guys who are from his heritage chavez senior that is and you're looking at marquez just all of these guys barrera who are very offensive minded and had decent defense very planting your feet kind of defense and that's the mexican style you plant your feet you ride punches and you come back and counter but canelo wanted to add some wrinkles so he got some of that soul in his defense so he picked up some of those old school tactics like jersey joe walcott the camden buzzsaw dwight muhammad cowie james lights out tony floyd mayweather Bernard hopkins archie moore he's picking up all of the wrinkles to really position his fighter that's against him to have many 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 more obstacles than he planned and that's one of the reasons callum was not clear on how is this dude getting away and eluding these punches because until you get in the ring you don't understand how difficult it is to crack that code guy has so many different wrinkles inside of his boxing game because he's been in the ring with the likes of a sugar shane mosley he's been in the ring with eris landa laura some of the things that he experienced when he was in these fights is i can't hit him how i want to and that makes a fighter with a high iq and conscious it makes him realize one thing i need to adopt these wrinkles in my game even oscar de la hoya picked up styles from floyd mayweather senior because he was his coach and when he realized hey when he fought vargas he used the, the the philly shell and he did a quite he did a good enough job to win the fight by stoppage and it was because he was able to overcome that onslaught that vargas was bringing upon him and fernando vargas was ferocious whenever you start allowing him to let his hands go he was bringing the smoke so that style it gave him something but canelo continued to add to those wrinkles and hence why triple g had so much problem with him the first time when it comes to missing him a lot even though a lot of people had that fight even or had triple g winning what they did not realize is judges also scored defense and he was very elusive the second time he went out there and he started it off with the bazooka jab 
And that, my friend, is his celery. That celery is his defense. So now he has carrots in his in his um, threshold. Now he has celery. And the next thing that comes with Canelo soup is his pace, which allows him to dictate how much he wants to output and how much that he can stay in control over what his opponent wants to do is literally like a form of hypnosis where he comes in stoic and he basically takes the algorithm of his opponent's brain and he just controls it and floyd did the same thing great fighters can do that and whenever he started to pummel him boom with the jab and walk forward he was able to utilize different tactics and i can't wait to, to get around to the other sectors of this and you guys are really going to take a lot from it and i appreciate it and if you liking what you hear like us oh man i hope you guys are enjoying the first half of this show but i'm telling you the second half is lights out you're gonna enjoy it get your notepads out it's about to go down while i finish thrill of the fight with this oculus peace don't forget to subscribe. Free training on us. Peace. This control dictates exactly what he wants to happen. All right. The pace is everything because now he can turn it up. If you took note, he would turn it up in spots. And that's what a great fighter does. And when he throws, he throws. He was able to throw hellacious punches left, right, body, uppercut, hooks. He was mixing up his attack and starting it constantly off with a punch and closing it out, crushing body shots and making sure that he was breaking the tissue down and the muscle fiber on the dexterity in the shoulder and breaking it down because he realizes one thing. You're fighting top guys. You're not fighting world champion fighters who have been tested at this level. And for those of you who are watching and you're not sure what we always mean by levels, there are so many different layers to the, the world of boxing. You can take one skill and you can continue, continually over years, weeks and days, months, fold it into another skill set so you start off with a skill and you're able to develop it and what it, you call you got to first master the technique all right and then from the technique you take it and turn it into a skill meaning not only am i able to do this now in a slow motion manner now when i'm boxing i'm using this tactic and that starts to become what you call a skill from that point, you graduate to skill sets. That means you've taken the liberty to increase the skill to a point where it's a multitude of them in bundled bundles now. And when you have those skills and they're bundled, that's when you can call them skill sets. You've gotten your muscle memory embedded. You've trained all of these muscles and it takes years, not weeks and days and months. You can you can pretend that you have it but the thing about it is you will soon have to get a receipt when you step up to that cash register and you lay your stuff down on the counter the reality is when you are in there against someone real you will find out if you really really own that skill set or not after you learn the skill set the next thing that follows that is understanding the concepts of putting those together so now you're in a different point levels 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 and these are the things that canelo's continually doing he's taking a technique he's mastering it and from that mastering that technique then he adds skills and that skill starts to turn to skill sets and then the skill sets turn to concepts and then once he's mastered the concept of that then he starts to add craft on top of that and his theory and then now 
once he's a complete package he starts to add wrinkles and the part of his career that he's at right now he's adding crazy wrinkles to it and that's why he's so difficult to deal with you can look at it from the outside but whenever you're inside of the ring you can never get that perspective watching videotape because now he knows you're going to make the same mistake that he made against floyd judging what he saw during him and being inside of the ring with another guy and that's kind of where people can go wrong so craft and wrinkles don't look like when you first learn in boxing the technique ain't the same it's an entirely different thing it's more of prize fighting tactics not technical boxing so therefore it doesn't look the same it doesn't look right most of the time it looks wrong but that's what i mean when i say it's levels to it so don't judge people that you see because you don't know what level they're on that my friends when it comes to pace and him being able to control it that is called his corn and that is inside of his soup the next thing is the pressure the mental pressure that he plies on the guy and he starts to rake him to the body and the head and mixing up his of off hooking off of uppercutting off of or leading off of and it starts to become a bevy of problems for the guy right this is what happens when you're in a real gym and you're learning all of these tricks of the trades. Some of the guys who are in the history of boxing, the Willie Peps, you got to study these guys. You got to study girl guys like Jersey Joe. You got to study these guys who had really, really savage tactics like Gene Tunney. These guys were smart, educated fighters. And at the same time, so hard to figure out. Even Jack Johnson gave you a lot of tricks of the trade. Joe Lewis, absolute offensive juggernaut, the most balanced fighter in all of boxing. The history of boxing really was built off of heavyweights. But over time, the lighter weight classes became more popular in a lot of different ways. But when you look at the heavyweights, the guy who stayed the most balanced, and had the most precise punch power and the pre most precision when it comes to his combination was Joe Lewis. Go watch highlights of him. And if you look at any of his fight, you'll see. And that's what Canelo is possessing. Balance, mental prowess, pressure. He's bursting the pipes. You can see in that fight that Callum, and I don't even really want to equate this, this, this post and make it about Callum because it's not. It's about Canelo in his entirety, the body of work. These are constants that you see in all of his fights. So when it's all said and done, I hope you got your pen and pad because we're closing it out now. That, my friend, was his. The next thing will be the footwork. And we teach our guys these tactics. As he started to get warm, he walked them down. And the tactic that he was using was those of Jersey Joe james tony these weren't tactics that most mexican fighters use but these are his wrinkles it wasn't what his style was built upon but it's what he's added past his concept he understands the concept of boxing because he's put in the work he's been fighting since he was a kid he's been a pro since like 17 i mean in mexico you can do that but the thing that has really made his game began to permeate as now he's really mastering the science of grunt walking his man down and then not only that did he do that but after a while sixth seventh round he started to do the detroit prance which is little light jog i can't catch up with you the way i want to or you started the great escape a little bit faster so he asked Callum started to move faster away. Canelo stopped grunt walking him down and Philly pranced him down. He started to jog behind him and catch the rabbit. And uh, that's what you start to see when that mental pressure is on you and you have a beautiful stylistic fighter like Canelo Alvarez bringing that heat, throwing that smoke, just taking no prisoner when it comes down to 
the guy who's in front of him that night and he displayed serious i mean these punches he was hitting um callum smith with some stuff that would mostly break any man down and when you see that it is almost like you feel for the guy because he just can't come up with an answer and his team was trying but offense defense the pace conscious of footwork and that philly prince he stepped do, 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 closing it out grunt walk him down that's what we teach man that one is in uh, a lot of you don't know that we have the digital courses so that is in philly shell volume two the philly shell where you really show them the tech tactics on closing the guy when he's trying to get away because he don't want no more of that smoke and stuff and then the the just the variations of how to get the punches in there and you can see right there he was doing a hook off of and it doesn't matter which direction misdirectional punches that's in our peekaboo punch performance where it shows you different tactics on how guys who have great power still find ways to open you up and that's kind of what he did to amir khan he did it with triple g in the second fight a lot and of course he did it last night that uppercut and hook to the body rap rap wow it's just more of advanced and so that's what we teach but we also teach you not to take this lightly you have to follow up with clinics and really learn how much training per exercise that you need and um that's kind of what we do in our course for everybody is make sure that they don't come up short get excited and feel all happy because they've got to start doing the skill and become a master at it that's kind of it so uh that's our contribution to the sport of boxing so check us out see what it looks like and yeah that's the peekaboo punch performance get that download it's free we're giving you just the excerpt of it so you can really get a, an idea of how that training looks next time you look at a fight you understand oh man this is this is crazy i i learned a couple of these drills and you'll see it philly shell 2 volume 2 this that's our gift to you we don't just want you to watch our channel so subscribe make sure that you're not goofing off and subscribe hang out with us follow the channel we're getting it popping and last but not least the pressure which is we collect we classify that as the coin that is the broth all right he cannot do this without a system and that's what you learn over a period of time whenever you're in there and you see a guy like Canelo he's become a master of a system and now he can add those components and wrinkles and that pressure that he brings that mental pressure you could just see as it started to break his opponent down mentally physically his corner was broken down his family was broken down his fans people on social media they just it was mental pressure and that's kind of what the science of a scientist brings in a sport of boxing so let me know where you guys are from let me know where you at and the final component is his iq and the iq is the thing that gives the seasoning to this soup and it's the mexican soup bone that's what gives this entire lesson taste his iq inside of the ring and outside of the ring because you can't get an iq like that if you don't operate outside of the ring the same way you operate inside of the ring you make the right de decisions you live around the clock training your mind your body boxing and a lot of guys do not do that i'll say 80 percent of the guys who fight maybe 85 don't live it they just want it and canelo's showing why he was 365 million dollar man why is he a pay-per-view star why is he a mega athlete in the sport of boxing because he continues to increase and improve his performances no matter who's he who he's in the ring with and that's it man that's all we got the five deadly venom that make up canelo alvarez's vegetable soup defense offense his mental pressure his attention to the detail when it comes down to 
his footwork and understanding the ring IQ. And that's all of those components, but he's really doing it. And that's what makes it up. So I hope you guys enjoyed the time that we spent together. And I just wanted to educate you. So you're watching the fight a lot different and that you are able to appreciate the value of what it is we do. Um, I hope like heck that you take the time. And I think last time we gave away a heavy bag training program. Go out here and check it out. It's, it's a beautiful thing for you to go out there and try to see if you can implement that. And that's the Peekaboo Punch Performance. It's free. Uh, this book was written. The download, the guide gives you real instruction on how to play around with a little bit of boxing. Just don't come out there and try to step in there and get that smoke with Canelo. Enjoy it. That's our gift to you. We're closing the year out in a beautiful kind of way. Started off kind of rocking, but just like the triumph last night and throughout this year we've done it again boxing for the win until next time be blessed at god's speed subscribe and continue to follow us at master boxing across the board special shouts out to you guys and thank you guys for taking the time out to hang out canelo the mexican machine gun kids a problem